Hello, uh, I'm speaking with Marie Romero Cash, who is one of the participating artists in the Santera Images of Faith and Folklore exhibition featured at the Harwood Museum. This exhibition is curated uh, by uh, Gustavo Victor Goler and Nicole Ashley Dial K, who is the official uh, Harwood curator. So um, <clears throat> tell me, Marie, uh, uh, where were you raised and, and where do you live now? I was born in Santa Fe, as pretty much all of my ancestors have been. And I lived in South Capitol, and I am now living behind the house where I was born. And my father's apricot tree, which he planted in 1930, hangs over my wall every summer. So it's, it's just really been nice. Oh, that's wonderful. So, um, you know, how many, how many years have you been an artist and how did you become an artist? I have been an artist for about, well, let's say 45 years or so. And I always dabbled when I was growing up. There was always something new that came on the market that you could try out. But I was never really serious about any artistic endeavors. And so when I came back to Santa Fe after living in Phoenix for a couple of years, um, my parents were deeply involved in their tin work. Uh, and it, the difficulty with going over to my parents was that my dad wasn't going to let you sit around. You had to participate in whatever they were doing. So consequently, I documented their tin work with an NEA grant. And I discovered it wasn't for me because it was too noisy. My sister, Anita Jones, at the time was already paying me in retablos, and she encouraged me to start. And I started on a small scale and then built it up. Would you say that you, um, you know, you mentioned that your family, uh, your, both your mother and father were artists. Can you um, elaborate on that just a little bit? Like, uh, obviously they had been doing it for a long time. Yes, my father was a retired sheet metal worker from Los Alamos. And in the process of doing work at home, he was searched out by some of the museums to duplicate their pieces that they had in the collection that were tin work. He had not yet retired, but when he did, he became a full-time tinsmith. And after a while, they became very well known. Uh, Emilio and Sinaida Romero received national right. awards and recognition through their lifetimes. That's fantastic. What a great history. Uh, would you say that you uh, had any other influences, say from other artists, aside from, from your parents, um, you know, that influenced your work? I think the biggest influence on my work was being able to conduct a survey in 1987 with Jack Parsons of all the saints in the New Mexican churches, all the historic churches. And it was so awe-inspiring to be able to see these places in situ and know that they weren't in any book at the time. And just being able to see them and wonder who created them and um, it was just an inspiration for me to see how they were actually done rather than looking at a photograph. Yeah, it's great to see them in person and then also to see them in the churches, you know, to see a lot of the devotional work, you know, that's, that's in place is always, is always wonderful. Um, would you say that you're uh, more of a painter or a carver? And could you explain the different mediums and techniques that you explore in, in sort of the cultural arts that, that, you, that you practice in general? Well, my, my first actual retablo was one of St. Francis and it was in oil. And it took forever to dry and I didn't like it because I couldn't control where it was going. Then I switched over to acrylics and made small little retablos. And then I had an opportunity to recreate an altar screen that was, parts of it were at the Taylor Museum and um, it was at Arroyo Hondo, New Mexico, and they wanted to recreate the original altar screen. 
So I thought that in order to do this, I needed to switch to uh, natural pigments and watercolors. And, and so I've been doing that ever since. And I, I prefer it because I like really bright colors. Right. Um, let's see. Um, can you describe your work um, a, a little bit and uh, you know the, your thought process? I generally keep a tablet of ideas, but I don't spend a lot of time sketching because I find it to be really time consuming. So I do really rough sketches of what I think it should be. And then I decide if it's going to be a carving or a painting and prepare either a template so I can have it cut out in wood. And then I do the basic carving and then I get my guy to sand it and then it comes back to me and I gesso it and get started painting. It um, usually my inspiration comes from either biblical passages or from medieval art. I try not to focus too much anymore on some of the art that's been done in northern New Mexico because it's been repeated so much. And that's always been my theory of, gosh, how many St. Anthony's can I do over a 45 year <laughs> period? And how different can I make them so they won't look like the thing that everybody else is doing? So I do try to be a little more innovative in my work. And, and I've been grateful that I'm able to spread my wings, if you will. Right. Do you, um, what got you a little bit more involved in sort of the three-dimensional work that you do, the actual carving? You mentioned retablos and different mediums that you've used to, you know, achieve those. Uh, how did you uh, become more of a, of a sculptor? I had my first show at Dewey Gallery in the early 1980s. And I did a few smaller pieces, but when I had a show at Peyton Wright um, with my son, it was something that required me to have larger pieces and the carvings were able to fill that more than paintings were. And so I embarked during all that time on trying to do things that would not only delight the viewer, but I would be happy in creating them. Do you have a, do you, a favorite? Do you prefer to paint retablos versus uh, carving bultos? I prefer to carve, but I also prefer to do pieces that are multifaceted. In other words, I don't like to do a carving. I like to do things that have many parts and pieces to them. And so it involves carving more small pieces than it does carving one big piece. One larger piece, right. It's nice to see that combination that you, you sort of play off of in, in your artwork. Um, do you have a memorable project or award that is maybe important to you? Something that, you know, that you've created that's sort of meant a lot to you that's maybe in a church or museum or, or, or awards, honors that you have received that are you know, because you've won many awards, and so uh, is there any one in particular that, that maybe sticks out for you? Well, I think one of the most important projects I've done in my lifetime um, is being able to create altar screens for many of the northern churches in the 80s and part of the 90s. But then I was commissioned to paint the Stations of the Cross for the St. Francis Cathedral Basilica, and when the impact of that hit me long after it was done was that those would be in place probably for a long, long time after right. we're all gone. And that was the thing that struck me the most about it was that uh, thousands of people would view these Stations of the Cross every year. Right. Yeah, that and, was great... you know, coupled with that, the Master's Award for the Spanish market and also the um, city of Santa Fe giving me an award also last year. And, and so those are some of the things that stick. That was the mayor's award or? The mayor's award, yes. All right. So um, do you consider yourself a Santera or an artist? 
Well, I started out being a Santera, Santera artist. And as my work progressed, it took on more of a folk artist type of, of um, process, if you will. And so I consider myself a Santera slash folk artist slash artist because I do a number of things. And it's, it's really hard to put me in a cubby hole. Right, right. Um, you know, and, and sort of as a final question, I just want to know if there's anything that you would like to say uh, about your work or yourself, or if it's, uh, <clears throat> If it was challenging uh, uh, being a female artist in what was historically known as sort of a male-dominated field. It was always challenging to be a female artist, but after a while, I just kind of put that aside and, and continued to do my work. And I'm grateful that I've been able to do so many pieces over the past 50 years and that I continue to create and I hope to be able to create for a number of years to come. That's wonderful. You know, Marie, thank you uh, so much uh, for the interview. I really appreciate it and, and really love looking at your artwork uh, that is in the background. So thank, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.